So, uh, my name is Zabia Nasser. I'm Lebanese, right? I'm 41 years old. And uh, I live in Dubai since 2016. Uh, I work as a regional director for an, uh, an IT company covering the whole, the whole region. I always had this in my back mind that I need to do my master, I need to do my master's, but I couldn't have time. And then I got married and then, you know, your time is between work and home and then kids and then responsibilities and lots of stuff. So it took me a while. It took me yeah, quite a while, 15 years. Simple search. What is the best MBA program? All right. What are the programs? Executive MBA. Oh, it's nice. Okay. So I've already have 18 years of experience, right? Field experience. So now I need to get the part, but not in a specific area like project management or whatever. I wanted something, you know, on, on an executive level just to boost my managerial uh, skills uh, further and see how the theory can be applied on real life experience, right? So I had three things. It, I wanted to be in, in UAE or not. I wanted to be from a very uh, reputable and recognizable uh, university. Um, it should be part-time because I cannot have it full-time because I have a full-time job, right? So I couldn't spend more than six, seven, eight hours max a week for something like this. And I want, it, um, I want the payment to be as flexible as possible. So those were my criteria of search. So one evening, nice evening, sitting outside on the balcony, just did a couple of searches and ah, okay. University of Northampton, okay, now this executive MBA, right? What is this program? Nice, they have local representatives with this alliance with Stafford. Uh, they have flexible payment, they're part-time, they're very repeatable. I mean, in my search, I recognize that they are the third in UK, right? It's a very repeatable uh, university. Okay, great. So I contacted them. This is basically what what happened. I saw other universities for sure, but I wanted something that fulfills all those criteria. Right? I cannot be full time. Uh, I cannot pay in full in one shot. So I need to have a flexible payment schedule because all of the other responsibilities that they have, obviously. Um, and I want um, uh, a reputable organization that I can work with with local presence. So I found all of these criteria in University of Northampton and this is this is where I, I decided. Immediately I dropped them in an email. And the process was too easy. I mean the next day someone called me. Um, we arranged an interview. Um, in a couple of days interview was done. Another couple of days approval. And we started. I started back in I mean last May. It's hard by itself. Having it remote it's it's already hard enough, right? You don't see your professor, right? You don't interact well enough with your professor. You don't interact well enough with your classmates, right? I mean, you don't see them. You don't talk to them. We dis we we had to create a WhatsApp group just to uh, have some chats. You don't have an actual group activities as it should be when you are uh, you know uh, studying on prep. Uh, so the professors um, decide. I think they compensated that or they mitigated this, those challenges by being so friendly and open for, for any questions that we have. Even after the session, you know, if, if we have any questions, we can, you know, directly communicate with them. They were very, very friendly. And also the hands-on experience that they have. So everything that we've studied so far, it has a real life example, right? That we're discussing. I mean, most of us, they already have the experience. Some of them are new and they're doing this master's after graduation, but uh, the majority of that group, and me, for example, I have already 18 years of experience, right? So when I ask a question, because I already experienced that, and I want the theoretical explanation for something like this, right? Or the other way around. So, uh, sorry, I, I like it so far. Okay, so far so good. We've been in the in the third course right now, third module, and uh, five more to go. Been very supportive actually, uh, because I wanted to do that as I said uh, 
for a long time, right? And I didn't have, let me not to say courage to, to do it, but I didn't make that decision, right? Because of, of lots of, you know, stuff, work, family, you know, you're busy all the time. And if you have a free time, you better spend it with your, with your family and kids, right? But I wanted that all the time. And I always tell my wife that I wanted to do that. And uh, when I made that decision, yeah, she was she was very supportive, and now she's jealous. So she's waiting for me to finish mine so she can start hers. So well, yeah, it's been eighteen years, right? So you know, going back to all those researches and literature reviews, and going back to the critical thinking part of it, how to write this literature review, how to do the search, how to reference. You know, all of this stuff, you know, comes back to your to your head slowly. At the beginning, I, I really faced some, some challenges. It's been 18 years since I, I did that, right? So I struggled a little bit, but, uh, you know, you get you get used to it. Everything will, will come back to you. If, if you are still a student and going for the master's, I really encourage that. Don't stop, right? Because if you stop, it will be really hard to come back, like what happened to me. You can finish just keep going until you finish or you reach your your goal don't stop because when you stop and go for you know work and family and stuff it's really hard to come back to right and uh, not all people can do that okay especially if you don't have the right support if you don't have you know the right support from the company that you're working for and from the family because there is a dedicated time that you need to spend every week right uh, dedicated to this and uh, if you're not a student, if you're someone like me with a couple of years of experience and you want to do it, you still need to do it. Okay? Don't hesitate because hesitation uh, is your enemy, right? In my opinion, I've been hesitating so long, right? And every day passes, it will be harder for you, right? So just do it. Uh, this was the, um, the second uh, module about leadership and uh, different type of, of leadership and leadership styles right? and how this is affecting the overall performance of the organization right and this is actually what we do what i do right and how to deal also with uh, multiple personalities multiple nationalities uh, how to select the right personality for the job and how to manage people right because Right now, beside managing the actual business and figures and numbers, that's one area. But managing the people is the most difficult job in any managerial uh, position, right? Uh, especially when you have multi, multi-nationality, multiple, you know, different nationalities, different personalities, different cultures that you need to deal with at the same time, as well as managing them dealing with each other as teams, right? So it's not an easy job and it, it all depends on your leadership style and what do you want from from your team you want the team to follow you based on what right based on authority or based on you know uh, le leading by example or based on the idea of change especially when when these days if you don't change and this is something that i i wrote about in, in my review there is this concept of you know change or die right we are in a continuous journey that requires a continuous change according to the circumstances right so if you're not flexible enough and your organization is not flexible enough to go through the change you will hit a brick wall and then you will be left behind because business will continue and these days, the economy is really very, very, very challenging, and it changes every day. So you need to be flexible enough, right, and agile enough. And you cannot do that without the proper team in place, and without the team accepting that change. And the way you, as a manager, you pass this message to the team and keep them engaged in every step through the change, it's not going to happen. And eventually, you will fail. So that's something I really learned. I was doing it out of, you know, instinct, right, and experience. Uh, but now I have it. I, I, I can apply the theoretical models that we have learned 
right? In my uh, real life experience. So hopefully I will be a better manager after this. Um, I did lots of mistakes, believe me, right? And I learned the hard way. So yes, some stuff I was doing, uh, it felt right at that time, but uh, when you reach the wrong expectation at the end, you know that what you did is wrong and, and you learn from those mistakes so you don't do it again. And this is the, um, the nice thing about, you know, learning from experience. Uh, but if you have any doubt of this is the right way or the wrong way, here comes the theoretical part, right? To confirm that yes, this is wrong and this is the right way of doing it, right? So now it's sticking in your mind that yeah, this is the right way of doing it. So later on, if you were doing some stuff, you know, not effective enough, right? Now you know what you should do and how you should deal with these things. Especially again, when, when we talk about managing people and managing expectations, um, there are some, some stuff that I decided to change in my leadership style, definitely because of this.